Hello friends, welcome to mechanical classroom. Hope you all are doing well. Let's continue our discussion on the subject engineering mechanics. This is the third part of module 5. Today we are going to discuss about instant linear center. Okay, you consider an arbitrary shaped body which is rotating or which is undergoing a general plane motion. General plane motion means it undergo both rotation and translation. Okay, it is rotating with an angular velocity omega as you can see in the in this diagram. Okay, now at a particular instant, at a particular instant, this body can be undergo a pure rotation about a certain point. Okay, we call that point as instantaneous center. Okay, at a particular instant of time, body appears as if undergoing pure rotation about a certain point in the plane of the body. Okay, we call that particular point or that particular center point as instantaneous center. You can see in this diagram, this is instantaneous center. Now, why we are studying instantaneous center when we are studying rotational motion? The reason is, we can determine velocity of any point located on a rigid body okay, by choosing instantaneous center. If you know instantaneous center, if you could locate instantaneous center, then you can determine the velocity of any point on the rigid body. Here two point is considered point A and point B and we can determine velocity V A from the formula R A into W. R A is the distance from the instantaneous center to the line of action of this velocity at A. Similarly, we have E B equal to R B into omega. If there is another point here as C, we can determine the velocity at point C in the similar manner. Now, let's see the characteristics of instantaneous center. First characteristics is the instantaneous center is changing every instant and is not fixed. It is not a fixed point. Instantaneous center will change for a same body from instant to instant. That is why it is known as instantaneous center. Okay. Second point you have to notice the velocity at any point in the body at that instant can be determined by assuming that body is undergoing pure rotation with angular velocity omega about the instantaneous center, which we have already discussed. And the third point is the velocity of instantaneous center it is zero. Now, let's see different method of locating instantaneous center or locating instantaneous center in different cases. Okay, first case is the velocity of a point and the angular velocity omega is known. Okay. These two things are known. Velocity of a point, that will be A, and the angular velocity omega are known. So, here is the figure. We know the velocity at this point A, that is VA, and the angular velocity omega. These two things we know. Then how to locate instantaneous center IC? Okay. The instantaneous center is located along the line drawn perpendicular to at A, such that a distance from A to the IC is VA by omega. I will explain. We know these two things, VA and omega, and then uh, we are drawing a perpendicular from the line of action of VA in such a manner that we are taking RAS VA by omega. We, we are taking RAS VA by omega and hence instantaneous center IC can be located. Now, let's see the second case. Here, the line of action of two non-parallel velocities, V A and V B are known. See, here we have two points A and B and corresponding velocities are V A and V B. You can see here that here, the, these two velocities are non-parallel. Okay, these two velocities are non-parallel. Uh, in this case, we are drawing perpendiculars perpendicular from the line of action of the velocity. This is the line of action of velocity at A, VA and this is the perpendicular drawn. 
and here we have another perpendicular drawn from uh, point B from the line of action perpendicular to the line of action of velocity VB and it will meet at a particular point we call that point as instantaneous center okay this is how instantaneous center is located for non parallel velocities okay now let's see third case third case is parallel velocity we know velocities v and vb and uh, whose direction is also known that is it is parallel we are determining uh, from this relation uh, r is the distance from instantaneous center uh, to velocity at a and rb is the distance of the instantaneous center uh, from to the line of action of velocity at b so rb is vb by omega r is va by omega okay now let's see a practical example for instantaneous center consider a board which is sliding down towards left okay this board is sliding down towards left so we know velocity at this particular point will be towards left toward in a horizontal direction whereas velocity at this particular point will be exactly in downward direction so here we are having two velocity and these two velocities are non parallel these two velocities are non parallel as we saw in the case 2 we will be drawing perpendicular from the line of action of velocity at a that is this this is first perpendicular and second perpendicular is from here to here and these two perpendicular will meet at a point we call that point as ic about ic this ab will be undergoing a pure rotation or else we can say at this instant the board will momentarily rotate about this point so this is what is called instantaneous center now let's do some problems a link ab is moving in a vertical plane at a certain instant when the link is inclined at 60 degree to the horizontal the point a is moving horizontally at 2 meter per second while b is moving in a vertical direction find the velocity of b okay this is the question so we have given a link a b and it is uh, given that inclination of link with horizontal is 60 degree and velocity of point a in horizontal direction v is 2 meter per second so we are drawing here this is link a b and its inclination to horizontal 60 and the velocity at a is given and it is in horizontal direction 2 meter per second what we have to determine is velocity of b in vertical direction that is we have to determine v b in vertical direction here also uh, we can see that uh, the line of action of the two non parallel velocities are known okay so as we saw in the second case of locating instantaneous center we will be drawing perpendiculars from the line of action okay line of action of velocity this is the first perpendicular and this is the second perpendicular and these two perpendiculars will meet at a point which we call instantaneous center instantaneous center can be uh, notated as either by letter capital O or by letter I or by writing IC these three notations are used okay so we will be getting instantaneous center as this consider from triangle AOB from triangle AOB uh, consider this ratio OB by OA OB by OA is nothing but cot 60 cot 60 value 0 0.577 okay we know v equal to r omega this is the general formula linear velocity equal to r that is distance uh, from the center okay r into omega omega is angular velocity so we can write in terms of instantaneous center distance like this omega equal to omega will be equal to v by r v a for uh, point a velocity at point a is v a and distance from instantaneous center is oa so v a by oa which is equal to v b v b by o b since omega is constant since omega is constant v b by o b so substituting the value we will be getting uh, omega 
omega equal to vv by va equal to ob by oa equal to 0 0.577. This is already available from here. Now, uh, considering this uh, vv by va equal to 0 0.577, we will be getting VBS 1.15 meter per second. So we have determined in this velocity that is velocity of B in the vertical direction. Now let's do another problem. A cylinder of radius 1 meter rolls without slipping along a horizontal plane AB. Its center has a uniform velocity of 20 meter per second. Find the velocities of the points D and E on the circumference of the cylinder as shown in the figure. Given a figure, this is the cylinder which is rolling over a horizontal plane AB. When a cylinder rolls over an horizontal plane, the point of contact instantaneous center will be at the point of contact. When a cylinder or a sphere rolls over a surface, the point of contact with the surface will be the location of the instantaneous center. Okay, and uh, here linear velocity will be zero. Okay. So, this is our instantaneous center and uh, what we have to determine here is find the velocities of the points D and E. Okay, we have to determine VE and VD. Okay, uh, before that we have given a velocity here, uniform velocity. This is at center, uniform velocity at center is 20 meter per second. We have given VC equal to 20 meter per second. Now let's start doing the problem. Here velocity of point C that is VC. VC we have given. So let's start with this given value. Uh, also this VC will be proportional to this distance. Since O is the instantaneous center, VC is proportional to uh, OC. We know proportionality constant is omega. Omega is constant. When we consider each point, omega will be constant. Okay. So, Vc will be equal to omega into Oc. Omega is the only unknown here. We will be getting omega as 20 radian per second. Now, let's consider this point. We are going to determine velocity at E. We know velocity at E is proportional to uh, distance from E to the instantaneous center O, that is OE. And by introducing constant of proportionality, that is angular velocity here, we will be having V equal to omega into OE, substituting the values, we will be getting 40 meter per second. So velocity at E is 40 meter per second. Now, third velocity is, is velocity at D, that is the another thing we need to determine. Uh, velocity of point D, VD, similarly VD it will be equal to omega into OD, omega will be OD. This OD can be determined um, by considering this particular triangle OCD, consider a triangle OCD, OD will be equal to root of OC square plus CD square. So OD will be root 2, substituting the value, we will be getting velocity at point D as 28.28 meter per second. Let's do another problem. This problem is asked for uh, your university examination in May 2019. A bar PQ of length 1 meter has its end Q constrained to move horizontally and the other end P constrained to move vertically as shown in the figure given below. The end P moves horizontally with a constant velocity of 5 meter per second. The bar makes an angle 30 degree. With the horizontal, find the angular velocity of the bar and the velocity of end Q and M. So we have given a figure like this. This uh, Q is moving uh, vertically downward and P is moving horizontally uh, rightward uh, direction. Okay. These are the given data. Length of the bar PQ is given as 1 meter. Velocity of the end P is given as 5 meter per second. And this angle is given as 30 degrees. What we have to determine is angular velocity of this bar. To determine angular velocity omega and velocity of end Q. We have to determine VQ and also we have to determine velocity of this particular point M. Okay. So this is the given diagram. Now let's, cons let's draw the uh, direction of velocity and uh, 
hence we can determine instantaneous uh, instantaneous center this is the uh, direction of velocity at q that is vq is acting in this direction so this is the direction of vq and uh, this is the direction of with uh, velocity at p now let's uh, draw this is the uh, case 2 that is two non parallel velocities two non parallel velocity so let's draw perpendiculars to these velocities so this is the first perpendicular and uh, this is the second perpendicular so this will be our instantaneous center this will be or instantaneous center which we can draw like this we are marking this instantaneous center as i okay now we know vp will be equal to uh, or vp will be proportional to ip that is distance to the instantaneous center from p and uh, vq will be proportional to uh, iq that is distance uh, to the instantaneous center from q and as we saw in the last problem, Vp will be equal to omega, omega will be constant of proportionality, omega, Vp will be equal to omega into Ip and Vq equal to omega into Iq. And combining these two equations, we will be getting this relation. Okay, now let's determine omega from uh, Vp. Vp is given as 5 meter per second here. So, Vp equal to omega into Ip this ip value uh, ip value is known ip value will be cos uh, pq cos 60 and uh, vp value is given as i said radio so we will be getting omega as 10 radio per second so angular velocity of bar this is the first thing you need to determine is 10 radio per second now consider triangle paq consider triangle paq okay from this relation here we already determined relation for omega we are rearranging this relation as vq by vp we will be getting vq by vp from this relation as iq by ap okay iq by ap now consider triangle piq here what is iq by ap iq by ap is nothing but uh, tan 60 okay so we can determine velocity at q from this relation vp equal to vp into tan 60 vp is given as 5 meter per second we will be getting velocity at q as 8.66 meter per second now let's determine velocity at this particular point m uh, before that we have to assume that this uh, point m is at the midpoint of bar bq okay now here consider this figure consider triangle pim that is this triangle okay uh, im square we have to determine im value im is nothing but uh, distance from the instantaneous center to the point m okay so im square will be equal to mp square plus pi square minus 2mp into pi cos theta this is from cosine rule which you have studied in school okay we will be getting im value by substitution I will be getting 0.5 meter so this distance im is 0.5 meter so we can easily determine velocity uh, of m point m as vm equal to omega into im so 10 into 0.5 that is 5 meter per second okay now let's do a last problem this problem is very important for your kdi examination since it is asked uh, for uh, more than three times okay similar type of problem is asked this is asked for ktu january 2016 examination here i have changed the values but rest everything is same in a reciprocating engine mecha engine mechanism the crank rotates at a uniform speed of 400 rpm the length of crank and connecting rod are 120 mm and 500 mm respectively find the angular velocity of the connecting rod the velocity of piston when the crank make makes an angle of 30 degree with horizontal. Now let's write given data. These data are given. We are converting everything into SI units. And uh, this is the figure. Figure won't be given. So you have to draw the figure. This is your crank OA and AB is the connecting rod. This is the piston. Okay. This angle is given in the question. 
Okay, what we have to determine is angular velocity omega ab. That is angular velocity of connecting road, which is represented by omega ab. And also we have to determine velocity of piston, linear velocity of piston vb. Okay. Consider triangle AOB here. Consider this triangle AOB. Okay. We have to determine this, this angle, angle phi, by applying law of sines. We know by law of sine AB by sine theta will be equal to OA by sine phi. So we will be getting phi as 6.89 degree. Now let's uh, draw the line of action of velocities at point A and point B. We know this crank is rotating in this direction that is anti-clockwise direction and velocity at this particular point will be perpendicular to the link. So this is the direction of velocity and here the piston is executing reciprocating motion and here the uh, direction of velocity will be this direction. Velocity of piston is in this direction. Okay. Once we get these two, we will be get, uh, we have got here two velocity, line of action of two velocity which is non-parallel. So as we saw in the case two, we are drawing perpendiculars to these two velocities or to the line of action of these two velocities in order to obtain instantaneous center. So we will be getting instantaneous center like this. Okay, so this is our instantaneous center. So we got instantaneous under I, I from this. Now we have to determine these angles uh, by applying law of sine and also we have to determine this uh, size IA, IB, all these things we have to determine by using law of sines. Before that, how this 36.89 is determined? It is determined from these two angles 30 degree plus 5. 5 is nothing but 6.89. So this angle will be 30 plus uh, 6.89, that is 36.89. Now, how this angle is determined? We know this angle is 30, and uh, we know this angle will be 60. Okay, this, uh, this angle will be 60, and this angle and this angle are alternate in the interior opposite angles. Okay, so this will be 60. So this is 36.89, this is 60. So 180 minus of 36.89 plus 60 will be this one 83.11. Okay, now let's determine uh, the distance IA. IA is the distance from instantaneous center to point A and IB is the distance of instantaneous center from point B. This is determined by using law of signs. We you know consider this triangle AIB, consider triangle AIB, we are applying law of sines AB by sin 60 equal to BI by sin 36.89 which is equal to AI by sin 83.11. We will be getting BI as 0.3466 meter and AI as 0.5732 meter. Okay. Now angular velocity of crank OA we have given n value rpm is given from that we can determine angular velocity of crank omega oa as 2 pi m by 60 that is 31.4 radian per second now velocity of point a velocity of point a can be determined from this relation va is proportional to oa va equal to omega oa into oa and we will be getting va as 3.77 meter per second. Now consider connecting road. Considering connecting road velocity of point A. Okay, this A is at the end of crank also at the starting point of connecting road. So this is by considering the crank. We, we are getting VA value and the same VA can be considered for uh, when we consider the case of connecting road also. When we consider this bar, bar AB VA will be equal to omega AB into AA. Omega AB into AA. So, also we know angular velocity of connecting load 
here will be equal to uh, 6.58 radian per second. Here VA is same VA 3.77 and AI we already determined AI substituting the value will be getting 6.58 radian per second. Okay. And the velocity of this uh, piston can be determined from this formula BB equal to omega LB into BI. BI is the distance from the instantaneous center to point B. Okay. And uh, we, we know VB is proportional to BI. VB will be equal to omega LB into BI. Omega LB we have determined here 6.58 substituting the value will be getting 2.28 meter per second. Okay. Hope you understood the problem. Uh, try to solve more number of problems okay if you have any doubt you can ask in the comment section also you can join my telegram channel where you can arise your queries thanks for watching also subscribe my channel mechanical classroom in order to get more beneficial videos